Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Santu, and I will be talking about enterprise GIS implementations with QGIS and PostGIS. So I would like to share you insights like related to if you're setting up a QGIS environment and if you have a uh, PostGIS database uh, somewhere in AWS or some other remote cloud, ser cloud database provider or on your own on-premise setup or wherever. And I will be uh, focusing on QGIS capabilities of making this setup more powerful for you. And uh, maybe it would be useful if we'd, you'd imagine to be a GIS manager for a municipality or, or maybe an airport or some other organization that have uh, geospatial data or your own organization, right? <laughs> so anyways, that's, that could help, help for you to understand maybe the benefits. So, but just first, a few words about our company. So we at GISPO, GISPO Finland and GISPO Sweden nowadays also, we help uh, organizations to get the most out of Phosphor-G tools in their geospatial uh, environments. So we train, we consult professional services, uh, we make software development, and uh, we provide uh, geospatial IT support. So that's, uh, that's more or less about our company. Uh, that's our mission. Uh, open source is open source and open data is, is all over our, uh, our existentially existence. And uh, that's what we are. Anyways, so we are moving to the next slide. But nothing's happen, happening. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yes. I don't know what happened. Maybe with that. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I can find the. Oh, I'm just going to move it back here and then I'm doing this. And then I'm going back. So first, uh, enterprise GIS as a concept. So maybe I'll just move them here, right? More sure. So uh, uh, first, we need to understand what are we talking about when we uh, think about inter enterprise GIS as a concept. So I mean uh, about all the when we have geospatial data and uh, we have the processes, the people, the databases, the servers, the desktop clients and so on. So that's, that's enterprise GIS. So within that uh, realm, th we have... Uh, uh, oh, it's not working anymore. Maybe I can move it. I don't know. I don't know where... Maybe... Page up, page down. Nothing's happening. Uh, maybe here, I don't know. So, maybe I could do this. Now, so an example, example sorry, <laughs> Helsinki, <laughs> Helsinki Vanta Airport uh, is, could be an example. So you have a lot of data, it's points, lines, whatever, and then you have to manage all the data and update the data, and it's mission critical. So, for example, we help the airport, and they have more or less this kind of setup. They have their centralized spatial database, and then they want the update updating and the editing process to me to be as seamless as possible so they provide a qgis like client to the database oh sorry <laughs> so we're talking about this this uh, uh, portion of enterprise gis database to client des directly to uh, desktop client, which in this case, of course, is QGIS. But there are all this other stuff related to enterprise GIS, which uh, 
really give the benefit of using centralized uh, spatial databases. That's why we have, that's why we are using this Pulse GIS, right? And, um, and in the first part, I'm going to talk about data creation and uh, uh, data management. So the first tip or lesson is to use this functionality from QGIS, which is hugely great, uh, which is called Discover Relations. Uh, so you have the problem that you are working on this hugely complex database model. For example, in uh, PG Modeler or some other database schema uh, editor. And then you're like, how am I going to build this in QGIS? I'm not going to add every relation. There could be hundreds of relations in, in the database. I'm not going to do that, right? So QGIS has this great, great tool that discovers with one uh, click all the relations related to the database. So that's, that's the first thing you want to do. And then uh, there are these things called custom attribute forms. These uh, provide an answer or a solution to the problem when you have the tables in QGIS, they have geometries or they don't have geometries. But you have the tables there and you want to make the updating, the editing process somehow user-friendly, right? So you make these custom attribute forms instead of providing them the attribute tables. So these forms make, make it as user-friendly as possible nowadays in QGIS uh, as a desktop uh, UI to your data. So that is, that, that is the second most important uh, tip or lesson. And then uh, within all the realm of custom attribute forms, there's this other thing called drag and drop designer. So this is where you design the custom attribute form, the, the one that you saw on the last screenshot. So this, this is how you make the tabs. This is how you, you move the, the, these are the, like the raw columns. So you move them to the different tabs and you use the widgets and, and, and all. So uh, drag and drop designer, because per default it's uh, on automatic uh, form designer. And then there's a video which more or less shows uh, how this, yeah, this, this, this is how the drag and drop designer looks. So you can see that it's, it's more or less user friendly, you don't have to code or anything. This is how the GIS manager, although he wouldn't be a sys admin or anything, he can build these forms without being a database expert, just knowing what are the data needs he can work at, uh, from QGIS to, uh, to build these, to design these forms. So these are the columns and then you choose a widget for the, every uh, column. And we come to the next, well here you, you're doing the, the tabs, maybe we, we don't have time to see the video, you're adding the tabs, and then there's this other uh, concept called widgets. The widgets are within the, when you're uh, designing the form, for example, you have a date time data type coming from your table in PostGIS. So maybe your problem is that your user maybe doesn't remember in what form he or she should add the date time to the QGIS form. So that's a problem, right? They wouldn't ever want to even uh, remotely want to remember something like this. So you can use these widgets to guide your user to only use, uh, only fill the data as you would want it. So the widgets are like check boxes, for example, for Boolean data types or calendars for data time, data, uh, yeah, well, data time especially type, drop down, drop down lists for if you have lookup tables. So widgets are hugely powerful. Uh, in this video, we're gonna use one of the widgets, I think it's, uh, or this is, uh, I think we're exemplifying here. I'm doing a parking slot here. This is a uh, project we're doing for a, a municipality. They have to uh, map parking slots and street, uh, street lighting, uh, lighting infrastructure and so on. And you can see how the, how the user is using their different uh, widgets within QGIS 
to fill and update data in, QG, uh, in PostGIS. He, we are using here a remote database in, in, in some cloud provider we are using. So that's how more or less the visuals uh, translate into real life. And then I have some lessons from related to workflow optimization and, and collaboration. So uh, one of the tips or lessons is uh, it's always hard, this part of the, the uh, in the IT setups you probably have in your on-premise or wherever you have your servers and databases. So sometimes QGIS gets quite, uh, could get slow if the uh, desktop client, in this case QGIS, is far away from the database. If you have, for example, in AWS or uh, in Azure or Herzner, your database, and then it's based, the data center is based on somewhere in Central Europe and you're in Helsinki, Finland, even that like uh, physical distance can make uh, the, the user friendliness could get a, uh, it could get uh, a slightly more slower. So you want to, when you're designing your uh, IT infrastructure or architecture, you want to keep this in mind. You have to uh, keep the database as close as it's possible to the uh, QGIS, uh, your desktops. And actually we were doing this, uh, this project related to this specific prob uh, problem because QGIS was, was getting quite slow and QGIS for some reason was making too much of different SQL queries. So our customers, National Land Survey of Finland and uh, City of Tampere hired us and the good people from Oslandia to, to make open source core development for QGIS and they financed this work and there was some, as we could, we could see in the video, there were some quite uh, significant speed enhancements to QGIS. So actually one tip related to this, uh, this slide is use uh, 3.30 uh, as QGIS version. It's, it's, it's not long term? Uh, actually, I think now it's 228 is the long term. So this is the next, uh, as far as I re recall. And you can also, as a lesson or a, lesson or a tip, you can consider uh, working with remote desktops or virtualized apps. So this is when you have your desktop QGIS, uh, or I mean your laptops, you're working at, at this level with your laptop, with your physical laptops, and then you connect to a remote a cloud environment and you have your QGIS like you have your QGIS in the cloud so it's close to the to the actual database so I think it's as close as it gets so this is a, a actually this is a fast solution but this is also a secure because you don't have any direct desktop database uh, connections from, the, from your laptop, you're working with the remote desktop. So if you have this as a possibility, you should definitely take advantage or try it. And uh, the next is related to sharing capabilities with QGIS profiles. This is more maybe a general recommendation, not that related only to databases. And uh, maybe at this moment it would be beneficial to talk about one of our customers is a city, city of Helsinki. They have produced or resolved this in a sense that or they had a problem where there are hundreds of city officials working across the city organization of, of city of Helsinki and it's, it's, they are huge like Fos4G uh, organization in a sense they, they're using uh, QGIS, PostGIS, GeoServer and uh, all, all these uh, good, good tools that we are all, all hearing here. So they, they could provide for their users when they open QGIS, they get, get to open their database connections, their uh, WMS, WFS, API endpoints, their own and within their internal network and uh, toolbars and even menus and even projections. So you can, you can work with the profiles so that your uh, users get 
in faster working with the, in the specific organizational environment you have. So use QGIS profiles for that. This uh, again, this this is uh, this, uh, it's the most beneficial to think this as if you would be a GIS manager, right? Well, we don't need to check out that debugging. Uh, this uh, more or less new tool in Q QGIS. You can also debug uh, PostGIS and database uh, connections and uh, transactions. So this is quite useful. Beforehand, it was only possible for API calls like WFS, WMS, but now with the toolbar, dev development toolbar, you can open it with right click. You can also debug uh, like the the time timing of your SQL qu queries or SQL uh, transactions, you just click the uh, rec uh, or whatever it's called uh, icon and, and you get a sense of the, uh, like what is taking time in your GI QGIS environment. And this, this, is, this, uh, this is also new for me, this is very useful. And I'm not sure like what was the version, but it's new, it's new. And yeah, we're almost at the end. Uh, so never use basic as authentication method. Use this uh, authentication database of QGIS. Maybe this is not that intuitive in the QGIS world because always one clicks in the basic. It's actually, it's per default, I think, open. And you just store. But this stores the uh, user and password in the QGIS project uh, file, like textually. So of course, it's a, a security risk. And for optimization, you can try use value maps instead of lookup tables. So uh, sometimes uh, QGIS takes a bit time for use the relations that are in the database, the lookup tables. So you can try and if your lookup tables are not changing too much, you can start. You can try and use the value maps because they use it, use the values uh, locally. So yeah, we're at the very end. Key takeaways. Uh, so drag and drop designer really can make data creation seamless. The, like the first part, it is really uh, makes a real difference if you try to to work with that. And uh, QGIS enables tool for enterprise environments. I think there's definitely no doubt about it. QGIS can work your en enterprise IT environments uh, without any 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 uh, problems. And then QGIS workflows are highly intertwined or related to the IT IT decisions you make at your organizations. As like you're, you're working with remote desktops, or you don't uh, where you don't enable direct database connections, and so on. And the last point, even the most important one, like keep learning. Like I think this slide deck is already too old, like for this first for GPS. <laughs> there is just so much information. Like, like yesterday I was still, oh, I learned this and that, and and so I can try this when I go home. And so that's the I think that's the most important point, right? <laughs> so that's about it. Any questions or so? Thank you.